Hey guys, what is up? Aoki here bringing you some more uh, coaching for a Leona player that is currently on EUS Silver 4. So this game is somewhere between like high bronze, uh, low silver. But we're going to fix that because we're going to get you to gold before the season ends, my friend. Uh, Salziger Kaislord. I'm so sorry if I'm uh, completely butchering that uh, pronunciation. But uh, during my coaching sessions, I always want to point out what you are doing right so that you can continue doing that and capitalizing on it and what you're, of course, doing wrong. So what you're doing right, excellent job. You're out on the map. You are having presence. The game starts at one second. This guy did not get that memo, so this is a great job. Love to see this. Now, one thing I will say is that your ADC is not... Uh, checking your bot try so you always want to be thinking about what is the absolute worst case scenario worst case scenario is that and I mean worst case scenario is that all five of them are grouping and invading through your bot side so what you want to do if he's not uh, holding this vision you just need to drop your ward here or here and then hold vision with your body you can single-handedly uh, keep vision of both entrances I do like to see that you're out on the map fast but one this is too risky because again think about that worst case scenario. If you start thinking about the absolute worst thing that could possibly happen in the next 5, 10, 20 seconds, it will start informing your decisions because what's the worst thing that could happen right here? All five of them are in that bush, right? So again, ward this entrance, get a ward here or here, and then just sit down here. And that way, they're absolutely not invading through your boss side, right? But again, I, I'm thinking that you're dropping a ward here, which is, you know, it's, it's good, it's smart. Okay, we got the ward out. We got two wards out. I would have much rather seen you uh, ward this right here. This is called the River Pixel Bush uh, because this ward, this is Jin's ward, by the way. This ward informs us if they're starting blue, which is good information. Uh, but you can basically get that information even without warding this. Uh, this is a really, really good ward because we... So their bot lane is going to come to lane, right? They're, they're probably going to be late to lane or they're going to be missing mana or missing health that they tank the blue. It's pretty easy to tell if they started the blue buff, even if you don't have this ward. Even if you don't see it with your own eyes, by looking at other information, you can contextualize it and say, okay, they did start at blue or they started red. Uh, until you get to higher elos where people start, you know, masking that information. Like, even if they're not leashing blue, they will maybe use an ability so that they're missing mana or they come to late lane or uh, lane late. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Basically, what I'm saying is that this ward is good information. This ward really isn't. I would have much rather seen you put the ward here because then you can see jungle crossing through the river. You can see mid going for an early gank bot side. This is a really good ward. Um, this is a decent ward. This is not so great of a ward. Because even with the jungler does start blue, he's not going to path through here pretty much ever. He's going to path this way or this way or down or through here, so not too great of a ward. But I did notice that you backed and got a red sweeper, which is fantastic. This is really, really good habit that I don't see a lot of low elo players doing in the support position, is starting lane with red trinket. This is so, so great, because you can use that red trinket to control these three bushes. So basically, they're gonna waste their ward, you use the red trinket, and then now they can never step within zenith blade reach of this bush. So, great job on the red trinket swap. All right, so let's talk about this matchup a little bit. We're against a Halo Blades Varus with heal and a Lux Dark Harvest with cleanse. This is a really good lane for us. This has easy, easy kill potential at level two, uh, or at least blow their flash. Also, you very rarely see cleanse on Lux. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later because there's a certain order that you need to use their spells uh, against cleanse targets. But we'll, we'll get to that when we get there. One thing I will say is that using that first Relic Shield on a the very first three minions is not super great. You want to, if you can, unless you're being pressured to, you want to hold those relic shields for the second wave so that you can last hit them faster, get level two, and go on them. So I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean. Like, those three weren't really heavily contested, right? We're not getting, like, pushed out of here. We're not really in a hurry to kill those three minions. And in fact, all that does is push the wave towards them which is not where we want it to be. We don't want it to be under their turret as Leona because it's er this early in the game. Maybe when we're level six, we can look for dives, but we're not looking for dives level two, right? So we want to hold on to that Relic Shield stack and kill these more hotly contested second wave. See, if you went into this wave with two Relic Shield stacks, you hit these two, uh, you hit these two front minions, you hit level two. See, look how hard these are to kill now because you're not executing them. It's much harder, isn't it? And you're going to be taking all kinds of damage. So you want to be needing to take this damage because you would just be executing these minions and jumping right on them. 
So let's see how you position on the level two. This is one of the most important parts of playing Leona. When this minion dies, you hit level two, right? So tell me, why are you back here? When this minion dies, when the third melee of the second wave dies, you need to be up here. You need to be in a position where you can jump on them. Now, you may still get this jump on them because it's a low elo game and they're not respecting level two. But if you go into your next game knowing exactly when you hit level two, they're not going to know. They're not going to respect it. I promise you. It's one of the strongest parts of Leona. Okay, yeah, here we go. Fantastic. Okay, so before this plays out, great pick. Fantastic pick. I don't care if it goes poorly. I don't care if you end up dying. This is the correct pick, right? You have level two. She's level one. She didn't respect your level two, just like I said she wouldn't. Uh, okay, so she has cleanse, and it act you, you actually want to wait for her to use her cleanse before you use ignite. Now, again, this is a low elo game, so she may not know that, but I'm telling you this. When you go onto a, a target with cleanse, you want to use your CC to force them to cleanse and then use your ignite. It's actually the opposite of what I usually... Uh, usually coach people on doing which is drop the ignite as fast as possible because the ignite is going to debuff the heal however she has cleanse which means she just cleanses the ignite right okay she doesn't cleanse the ignite apparently okay she just dies with cleanse up again this is still really good information great pick fantastic pick uh i just want you to have that information going forward because you're eventually going to play Ignite into someone with cleanse. But great pick on level two. Good stuff. And we got a chunk on Varus. Now we want we what we want to do is reset this wave. Use your new 300 gold. Uh put push this wave in. Excuse me. Push this wave in as much as we can. We know Kane is not here to contest it by any means. So we push this in. We go back, we buy boots, and we walk mid. That's what we should be doing. Okay. Again. So I'm gonna talk about. What you should and shouldn't be doing. You should not be flash eing onto a Varus when you're level two. Because best case scenario, the absolute best case scenario is you trade a one for one here. And I, I mean, maybe Varus blows his flash or something. This is just way, way, way too gung ho. No matter, listen, I understand. I play Leona too. I know you want to dive them at level two, but this just almost never works. Like, you're going to die here. Maybe you kill this Varus, but you probably don't, and you die anyways. Yeah. Okay. So, that's okay. That's all right. So, we talk about what we should do and what we shouldn't do. What we should have done is push this in, and then go back, buy boots, walk mid. All good, though. We live and we learn. So, we had one good pick and one bad pick so far. So, we got early boots. This is, what I, this is another thing I like to see. You're not just pathing straight bot. So many low elo players just walk straight bot. You've watched my coaching sessions, haven't you? All right, so we're walking mid. Mid actually is a viable gank here, and we know Kane's not here for the uh, counter gank. So you might actually be able to catch mid on the gank because the wave's going to crash somewhere like around here. You might be able to get him to blow his flash. But instead, we're going to unleash this for jungle, which is a very, very viable thing to do as well. Great, great, great. Okay, so using the sweeper here isn't super hot of an idea. The wave is all the way pushed under their turret, which means that your jungler is not going to be able to gank unless you're going for a dive. So I would be holding on to this red sweeper to, to maintain control of these bushes. Because right now, there's not any wards, but very soon, there probably will be, right? So this, it, th th make conscious decisions when you're putting down wards and when you're sweeping wards. Vision is like, a lot of people just go on autopilot when they, when they like control vision and when they use vision, but actually consciously think about why are you sweeping this? Is it to clear vision and make sure that Shaco can gank here? Cause Sh Shaco's not ganking here. He's, he's just hundred percent not. So really all we've done is a uh, waste our sweeper. All right, so we're walking into that poke a little bit. It's good. It's it's fine. It happens. Uh, you want to be positioning way, way, way more forward. These guys are two immobile squishies. And once you hit level three, there is no way they, they can kill you. So she, once again, so I was talking about earlier, you want to keep your red trinket and control these bushes. Because if you sweep this, she'll never be able to walk in, in there again, right? Because you'll be in there. 
You want to be able to sweep this and then just sit here. But if you don't sweep it, they can just auto attack you, right? They can poke you out. They know exactly where you are. Lux can queue you, auto you, everything. But once again, right here, this, this is not allowed. She is so, so squishy. So, so squishy. Your Jin has four shot. He's well within range to walk up and uh, follow up on your uh, pick. So this, that should have been a pick right there. Always be looking for the pick. Now, when you start playing against champions that can defend themselves or champions that can dodge your E, something like a Thresh that can flay you out of it or a Braum that can put up his shield or an Ezreal that can buffer his E out of your Zenith Blade, then it's harder. But she has none of those tools, right? And she and we know she doesn't have Flash. So, hey, bon appetit. Go in on that, bro. Once again, she's stepping up way too far. She's still level two, bro. You have a massive, massive advantage. Her ADC is super far away. This should not be allowed, bro. She's giving you a kiss. So, it's, it's all good. We're, we're going to teach ourselves to be able to recognize when champions are out of position. This is out of position. So, just always be thinking about the length of your Zenith Blade. Your Zenith Blade would go to, like, about right here, right? She's within it. Go in on her. Go in on her. We know where Kane's at as well. So, this is the only thing you don't want to let happen to yourself in a lane like this. This is like an ideal lane for Leona, actually. Like, if I saw this lane, I would be so happy that I locked Leona. They just don't have the tools to keep you off of them. The only thing that they can do is poke you out of lane. So, if we don't let that happen, then it's pretty free, right? Okay, so we've got Shaco here. Once again, easily within E, Zenith Blade range. What is the worst that could happen when you go in on there? You pop your W, you have Aftershock procced. You don't die. Maybe you get chunked. Maybe the gank doesn't work, but you get chunked. You don't die. Worst case scenario, Kane's right here for the 3v3. You still win it. She's just way... She's dead way too fast. You're playing too scared in lane, bro. You're playing way too scared in lane. Nice try. But, uh, yeah, this, this Lux is totally disrespecting you, man. Leona has one of the highest levels of presence in lane and bot lane. During laning phase... There's really nothing that can compete with Leota's presence. And by presence, I mean, think of every champion of ha as having like a big circle around them. And that circle is a visual demonstration of how close other champions can get in, like can get to them safely. And the circle is going to be different for every champion, right? Like they could reasonably walk up to Jin because his circle is, you know, he's not that big of a threat, right? Your circle is much larger and much more red. If they step in your circle, they die. If they step in Jin's circle, maybe they take a bad trade. It's all right. We missed our cannon. It's all good. All right. We spotted Kane. And there's nothing to fight for in the river. So it's okay to just back off here. We're chilling. Okay, now we got Scuttle to fight for. This is really, really good rotation, by the way. This is a very, very good rotation. I'm actually seeing a lot of really good fundamentals out of you. If we can just get our, our laning phase on lock and understand that these champions are disrespecting you when they do, you're going to be a god tier Leona. But the fact that, you know, you are already resetting for Red Trinket, not walking straight to lane, you're looking for roams off of resets, you're rotating to Scuttle Crab fights, you're the first one there... You're the first one there because you have something called Prio. So what Prio is, is priority. Which means that you, Jin should have came too, but it's good that you came. They, If they leave, they are miss. One, they're going to start taking minions if they t start a fight right here, right? And two, they're missing minions because the wave is pushing into them. So if this fight goes on for a while, this is going to crash the turret and they're going to be missing an entire wave of experience, right? That's called Prio. And it dictates which lane can rotate to Scuttle Crab and Dragons and Barons uh, faster. So it's great that you are the first one there because you have Prio. And look at that. And look at, look at that. Great job. Fantastic job. Because you went, Kane got too scared. He couldn't stay for the Scuttle contest. And he missed it. Excellent. Now we go back, and now we kill this Lux. We 100% kill this Lux. Look, these champions have no mana. We get, so you got to start thinking about your health bar and your mana bar compared to theirs as a as a like a resource, right? Look at all this resource you have to trade. They have like nothing to trade with. 
Look at this. If your health bar is this high as the frontliner, you've got a lot more. They have a lot more to lose than yours, right? You have full mana. They have no mana. That means if the if the fight goes on, she gets maybe one spell cast, right? She gets maybe one, possibly two spell casts. You can cast like ten spells, right? That's in your favor. Once again, she's in uh, she's in your E range. So you you've got good fundamentals in terms of macro and understanding. Uh, you know, the support role, it looks like, but it looks like you don't really understand Leona and just how powerful this champion is early. One one of the strongest champions early ever in the entire game. All right, we're rotating to this. Once again, great rotations, great rotations. Your ADC is not in any threat. So you don't have to stay there. You don't have to sit there and babysit your ADC. You see a fight going on over here and you're rotating to it. Now, again, who knows how this fight's going to go, but it's good that you're going there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me watch this. All right, boom. Probably could have snuck in another auto attack there. You know, Q auto. But cool E over the wall. You realize that it's nothing, so we should just blast count out. Blast count out. Nice. All right, so we take a reset. What do we got now? We got plated steel caps. Uh, no, plated steel caps is pretty, pretty... Pretty much objectively incorrect against this team. So you want to be Merc Treads so that you can frontline and body block things like Varus R, things like Lux Qs, things like Twisted Fates, uh, Yellow Card. They have way too much easy CC that you are going to be getting hit by a lot of. Uh, their damage profile does skew slightly AD, so I understand the... Uh, Plated steel caps just purely for the damage reduction, but I definitely would have gone Merc Treads here Especially because you're going to be the primary front line for your team You know, you've got a bruiser. You've got Garen, but he's not like a Malphite. He's not an Orn. He's not someone who's going to be standing in front and tanking all this stuff uh, What I would have done pathing wise is I would have walked through here I would have used your red trinket if it's up and then pinged and told your Diana to go for a gank here because once again, if you got if you can get behind them, you can fight this, right? Especially if you have your jungler with you. Or your mid laner, rather. Alright, so Jin's wanting to reset, but Diana's here. You guys win the 2v2. Absolute worst worst case scenario. Kane is here, but I really don't think he would be. So I, I say we just go. Nice. We're on top of him. Boom. We're tanking all kinds of damage. Alright, we miss our Diana ult. It's probably gonna turn into nothing. Oh my god. ADCs, boys. ADCs, ladies and gentlemen. Jin, that was beautiful. Uh, but you did your you did your job there. You were the primary engage. You didn't go too deeps, right? You're not invincible. But I really liked how you positioned here. I like that you soaked up all this damage. You probably could have kept pathing forward. I probably wouldn't have backed up at all here. But it's still good. You you saw the opportunity. You realize that you're getting the key. Dude, that ADC is too funny. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm happy with how you played that. All right, so we probably want to start taking our back here because the only option for you is to do something called holding the wave. They're looking to crash this wave, right? They're looking to kill all these minions and bring their wave all the way to this turret. The only thing you can do here is hold the wave by like standing here after your minions have died and tanking all of that minion damage trying to hold the wave so that when your adc is alive he hasn't missed all these minions but these guys are doing something called walking the wave in which means staying with the wave until it touches the turret so you really don't have any options here backing is the correct choice uh if you're really desperate to stay for this fight you could or, or maybe you're looking to get like a little bit of solo experience under the turret, but I would say backing is probably the right call here. All right, make sure you're popping your W for that, by the way. There, there, there is a world where you died from that. All right, so we're looking to do dragon off of reset. I like this pathing once again. We're not just walking straight bot. Look, we're coming out of somewhere that they didn't expect us. We're here. Boom. You're ready for it. Lovely. All right. We're zoning this guy. Obviously, we can't 1v1 him. So we're going back to our teammates. This is good. That was good stuff, bro. 
That was also good. Staying near your ally so that he couldn't get ported in by TF. But now the threat is gone, so we're going back to bot. Clearing out some vision. All right, we have level we have level six now. So the prime target that you want to drop your level six on is this Varus. If you can drop your ulti on this Varus, he should be dead. The only reason I don't say Lux, even though she's technically an easier target to kill, is that she's got cleanse. However, that doesn't mean you can't be engaging on this. You can always be engaging just EQ. I wouldn't be dropping the R on her. I wouldn't be using your ultimate, and I really wouldn't be flashing on this. Because remember, she's got cleanse. <laughs> Sick ult, but... Uh, okay, so let's talk about how you should have played this. It looks like you still guys kind of still want it. But one, you should be just EQing on onto the Lux here. You, you want to try to not use your ultimate. Right? You want to try to not use your ultimate because she does have that cleanse. So, unnecessary E, but it was a nice catch. And this is a really good ulti, actually. Despite being a raw ult, which I normally would say is not very good to do, that was a great result. But, if you had just done it the way I said, you definitely would have killed Lux. Uh, maybe would have damaged a bit of Varus, blown his flash. Another thing I want to say is that just because you you primarily engage on one target doesn't mean that you have to blow everything on that target. And that's a really useful thing to know when you start playing against like mid elos like gold and plat and stuff like that. Because like I talked about earlier, Thresh is going to flay you out of his E. So that doesn't mean you have to still just stay on the Thresh. Uh, another example is that like Morgana, if you E in on Morgana, she's going to black shield herself, right? But now you've Zenith Blade onto her and you super you're super close to her ADC who is not black shielded. So always be thinking about you don't have to drop everything. Even though Leon is an all-in champion, you don't have to all-in on one champion. You don't have to drop everything on one person. You can EQ in on Lux and then drop your ulti on Varus. Or E in on Lux, Q Varus, drop your ulti on Varus. Right? So just always keep those options open for yourself. Don't get into the mindset you said that you have to use everything on one on the champion that you primarily engaged on. Okay, so we see Kane at uh, Rift Herald. We are choosing to contest it. I would probably be like dropping some caution pings on my Jin because you aren't really leaving the wave in a great spot for him. And a lot of ADCs will greed for this when they shouldn't be. So maybe just like some yellow caution pings. But we have we have numbers over here. We have the numbers advantage, which means, which means we should be winning this. Crazy Zenith Blade. Uh, one thing I have to say, and it's really nitpicky, is that I would have just queued him there because you did give yourself the option to miss the Zenith Blade, and if you miss the Zenith Blade, he might actually get out. You know, let's say let's say this misses, he walks back into the wall and then goes over the wall this way, he could get out. So only use the Zenith Blade if you absolutely have to. He's definitely in just like Q stun range. But nice, really good collapse, dude. I'm telling you, like you're doing so much right. You are doing way more right than I see most silver players doing. It's just these little things that we're going to have to hone in on and really fix. And some of it appears to just be like comfortability, comfort, comfort with the champion. Like you just are unaware of how strong your champion is early. But and that and that's easy to fix. Nice little drive-by stun on the uh, on the bug. This is perfect. All right. We kind of lucked into a free kill here. Yeah, yeah, stay on him. Stay on him, yeah. There you go. Do you see how strong your champion is, bro? Your champion is cracked. Your champion is absolutely cracked early. Great stuff. Now, apply that. Apply that more. You could have been doing that to them starting level two. Yeah, get a little, get a little dancing in. I respect it. Alright, so we got Red Kane. We're not going in on him because our teammates are too far, but this could be a pick. Probably not, though. Not really finding anything. Oh, we are walking him up the river, though. Now, be aware that we're walking into Gnosis. He's looking for the port. We stopped the port? Yo, who is this Leona, actually? Incredible. Only thing I'm going to say is that once you absolutely have the kill secured, you can probably back away, but it's okay to take the kill there, man. We're not, we're not super certain about the uh, the status of his flash, and we don't want him to flash away. But it looked like he was just giving up and taking the death. Oh, oh. 
Little little lacking in awareness there, guys. We could have gone on Kane. So this is this is kind of what I'm talking about. So only use your Zenith Blade if you absolutely have to. Here's how it should go. The mo from most reliable to least reliable, your CC. Q. You can't miss it, right? You literally can't miss it. As long as you're holding down target champion only, which is the key binding that you should have. That way you can't accidentally stun a minion. But Q, you can't miss it, so just walk up, Q him. And then after you've already got him stunned, then you can drop the E. It roots him for 0 0.5 seconds. So Q is most reliable. E is sort of reliable. R is pretty unreliable unless they're already CC'd. You know, you know, R, there's a little bit of like prediction. You need to, you need to predict which direction they're going. Uh, things like that, and there's a cast time, and there's like a channel time, so if you can just queue, just always queue, right? So good stuff there. We're chasing Kane away. Ooh, getting knocked out of our E. That's okay. We don't overchase. Uh, I want to see you dropping more wards. You have three wards here. All right, there we go. It's a nice control ward. So. You should be looking to recall here. You are recalling on three wards. Oh no, you're not. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Those, those are your those are your relic shield procs. You might have actually used the wards there. I I wasn't looking. That 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 could be a coaching error. My bad. But I don't I don't remember you dropping wards. So I think you actually are backing on wards there. Always just drop every ward in your uh, sight stone if you're looking to recall anyways. Like just get vision here, here, here. You know. It could come in handy. I think you were backing on vision there. Or backing with wards up there. Alright, we're telling them to be cautious. You gotta work on your awareness, bro. You gotta work on your awareness. I'm assuming you were watching this fight over here. It 100% could cost you your life. It's already cost you a kill because you could have killed this cane. It's already cost you a turret shot. Might cost you your life next time, so... Work on awareness, brother. That's that's the third or fourth time I've seen it. All right, so we're super super chunked, but Diana's cleaning up. All right, this is way 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 too too ham, bro. Way too ham. You're you you keep going back and forth between not ham enough and way too ham. Your flash is a very, very powerful spell, man. You don't want to be wasting it like this. You just don't have nearly enough information about this. Even if you flash onto the Lux, it's just not worth it. It's just not really worth it there. But we're going to be taking the death here. It looks like you can take quite a few deaths. So th I think this is just a case of being happy with small victories, right? We got the Varus. Why flash blind into their bush? What's the worst that... Because remember that worst case scenario I was talking about earlier? Sometimes it comes true, right? Worst case scenario is there was someone in the, else in the bush and you guys get wiped. And now you've lost all this tempo. Uh, you know, you're losing top tier two. This isn't all your fault, but it's something that you instigated, right? Also, not your job to be going top here. Absolutely not your job. It's not really Shaco's job either. You should be going to the dragon. 100%. You aren't going to stop this guy. You aren't going to match him. You aren't going to 1v1 him. He's too far away. Go to the dragon, brother. Alright, so we realize we should be at the dragon. But by that time, the fight is already over and the dragon's gone. All right, so this is this is a perfect demonstration of what I was talking about earlier. Only ever use your unreliable CC if you absolutely have to. Because sometimes this happens, sometimes it misses, and then sometimes this happens, sometimes it misses. If you can, just walk up and queue him. If you can't, EQ him. If you can't do that, then you are. All right, looks like we're just going lock it. Builds are pretty pretty easy on Leona this season. They're going to get a little more complex next season, but uh, right now it's pretty much just tier two boots into Mythic into, you know, Knights of Hour Zeeks. All right, so we're peeling out of here. So usually around this time is when the game in, game in low elo becomes a little too Fiesta-ish to, like, properly coach. 
Uh, and it's just one of those things where it's like you kind of got to roll with the Fiesta. Great, great raw alt. Good raw alt. It was your only option to do. You didn't, you couldn't, you couldn't Q him. You couldn't EQ him. That's when we use the ulti. But good catch, bro. Not sure what that was. If you were like typing in base or something, make sure you're, you're at least in transit. If you are going to type to your monkey teammates, make sure you're at least walking to where you want to go. Also, why pop the sweeper if you're not going to clear the vision? Also, bad fight. No one is in range. You don't have nearly enough information. All that you see is that your main damage dealer is down here. Who knows where Varus and Lux are? You're closer to their jungle than you are yours. I would not be fighting this. This this doesn't seem like a good fight. It's not a good fight. So always be aware before you go in. It's not always about can you go in. It's should you. If you go in, who on your team is actually in range to kill? Because you're not going to do the damage, right? Uh, always try to hold on to your flash to actually dodge something. Right? I, I like this, though. I do like this. Remember, I'm always trying to tell you what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. This presence, this not leaving the fight just because you're low, is good. You're getting a little, a little close there. And once again, you're opening with your E. Open with your Q. He's he's in kissing range, bro. Don't don't use the E. Q. It's because a stun is considered hard CC. Root is like sort of hard. A lot of champions can still cast like a lot like all their important abilities while they're rooted, right? So stun. Nobody can cast anything when you're stunned. Also try to hold your flash to actually dodge something, uh, such as like a cane Q or a Lux laser. But the biggest takeaway from this is that you shouldn't, like like I said, we're getting into Fiesta territory. All this is happening because you engaged on that Gnosis that one time, and that's the engage that shouldn't have happened. So that's the biggest takeaway from this. You know, I'm going to be nit... I'm going to be nitpicking your micro in the way that you're playing team fights. but that's the biggest takeaway. Is the, the decision making to go in on Gnosis was wrong there. All right, we're walking to Dragon. We are walking to Fiesta in their jungle. Let's go. Nice try. That was that actually was a good look. That actually was going to be a really good look. If you had killed Kane there, you could have Baroned. Oh, you don't you don't want to walk away till your job's done, bro. What are you doing here? Stick with the team. Stick with the team, bro. What are you doing over here? Okay, even if you don't think that them being here is the correct uh, decision, you need to be with them. Because you're not going to solo the dragon. You're not going to, you know, match Gnosis. There's a saying I say on stream and in coaching a lot. And that's five players doing the wrong thing is better than one player doing the right thing. So, you know, apes strong together. Your, your teammate is kind of aping out here. Nobody's matching. You guys have very bad macro. But this isn't your job to be here. You can't, you can't do this. So you're just going to kind of awkwardly come over here and look at him. And now do like 10 damage to the dragon. When you could have been with your team the whole time. And who knows? Maybe if you were with them, that dive would have gone better. Maybe, maybe you could have gotten something out of it. So just, just commit. As the support, you need to be committing to those kind of things. You know, you can be communicating with them. Like pinging them off, things like that. But ape strong together, bro. All right, we're taking our reset because, see, now that we have someone over here, you actually might be able to affect this fight. Because you might be able to CC the Gnosis and have Garen kill him, right? So this is a good recall. Much better than your other one. There we go. Nice. Uh, it, It's possible to Baron here. It is. Someone just caution pinged it. So I'm guessing someone on your team, like, called it, and then someone else was like, no, nah, don't do it. But it, it, it's doable. There you go. See, cue that guy. Cue that guy. You can't miss it. It's unmissable. This would have been a pretty good engage on Gnosis. Because, like, 
You know, it's the same character in the same place. But notice how much is different from this engage from our last one. Our team is totally in a position where they can follow up. Jin can root him. Shaco can queue over this wall. You guys could probably kill this Gnosis here. So, you'll be a little, little more brave. You know, I, I know it's scary to hard engage on the tank. But sometimes that's the right play. See, now... See, now he's taking now he's taking the fight because his team is so much closer. Now, if you'd taken the fight back here, his team was way too far away. You guys are going to get dumpstered here. So, yeah. Just always be thinking about how close is my team versus how close is their team. That's such a big part of League of Legends is can we kill this person before their team collapses? Are they close enough? Do we have the damage? Is my team close enough? And as the initial, you know, pull the trigger type character like Leona, you, you need to sharpen your decision making in that area. Alright, so this game is probably just going to bleed out from this point forward. They they got Baron. Uh, they're starting to build a bit of a gold lead here. Alright, we had to use our flash. Defensively, boom, you're ready with the Q. Oh my god, the Lux ult totally devastates your team. Make sure you get your W pop before that hits. Also, another pretty pretty good uh, example of why Merc Treads was for sure the go-to here. The rest of your build looks fine, though. All right, so like, like I said, from this point forward, you guys are probably just like kind of dumpstered. Looks like you catch Gnosis one time. You instigate a fight. You get a few picks in the base. All right, good, good, good. You guys got a little bit of momentum back. So we want to shove out our waves, and we try. We want to try to possibly fight for next dragon. This is good. This is good. Now, this is not good. <laughs> Them looking for the dives with no waves is not very good, but you can't do anything about it. Unfortunately, as a champion like Leona, you can't save this guy because that would require you to go in and die with him. That's all you can do is drop your ulti right there. Boom, stun him. Keep running. Yeah, it's it's not looking good. Not looking good. Yeah, so it, it looks like from this point forward, there's really not much left to coach. So I'll, I'll let this play out. Um, I just want to kind of reiterate a couple of the things that uh, we've hopefully learned in this in this coaching session is that when you're against a champion like Lux who does not have the tools to get you off her, you should be on her. Um, I'm really liking what I'm seeing in terms of macro fundamentals. Make sure you're dropping vision before you reset. Uh, make sure you're consciously thinking about why you're sweeping something. Uh, you're, you should be sweeping something to consciously deny the enemy information such as, you know, Vision in a bush so that your jungler can gank. Or vision in a bush so that you can sit in it and, you know, threaten to go in. Uh, biggest thing I see is that you need to be a little more confident. And also, just think of that list of reliability when it comes to CC. Only be using your E if you have to. It's a great gap closer, but if you can just walk up to him in Q, that's what you should do. I'm sure you've seen this before in other champions. Like, Blitzcrank will run at someone... And someone will start dodging as if he's going to hook, but he doesn't have to throw the hook. Because by dodging, they've dodged themselves to death, right? He can just walk up and use his knockup, right? You can do that a lot with Leona, too. If, if they're giving you the option to Q, that's what you should do. But, um, yeah. So, this I mean, this is over. So, we just lose this. Uh, but, yeah, man. I hope you learned a lot. I've gone over a lot of concepts. More even than the ones that I summarized here at the end. If you have any questions at all... Uh, about this session, please let me know. You know where to find me. You know, you can PM me on Discord, on on Twitch, Twitter, anything, bro. OnlyFans, I don't care. You reach out to me if you have a single question uh, about anything. You want anything cl clarified. Uh, to anyone that watched this on YouTube, hopefully you guys learned a bit as well. And uh, take it easy, guys. Good luck climbing at the end of the season. Peace. Uh